Kia ora tato, no my hari mai, and uh, welcome everybody to our committee of council meeting uh, for Wednesday, the uh, 10th of June, uh, 2020. Uh, a warm welcome to um, members of the public that are here and to um, officers and everyone else, my colleagues. Uh, I'll just go through the health and safety of this facility, obviously the conference and function centre. Uh, the male and female toilets are located in the ground floor and entranceway that you came in. Uh, there's also disabled toilets there. Uh, all our entry and exits are listed with the, the green exit signs. Uh, this is a non-smoking facility. Uh, a first aid kit and a defibrillator are available in the, uh, on the ground floor in the office there. Uh, and please uh, follow uh, the staff around evacuation procedures. Uh, I'll now move to the first uh, order of business on Committee of Council, which is accepting apologies. And I have apology from Councillor Finlay for lateness. Are there any other apologies? There being none, I'll look to move that. Um, seconded by the Deputy Mayor over there in the distance. And uh, we'll have to do this. Oh, sorry, I haven't, we haven't got any electronics. So we'll have to do this by voice. So all those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? It's carried. I'll now adjourn the meeting and pass to... Uh, Councillor Rutherford um, for planning and strategy. Councillor. I'll just pass over to Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will formally open Arts, Culture and Heritage meeting for today. Um, call for apologies. Councillor Lufdenlay for lateness. Councillor Harpeter. Yes, there will be. Um, sorry, I will be uh, council business as well. So there is a uh, council business this afternoon. Elect some elected members are leaving. So that will be the mayor, councillor Harpeter, councillor Beatty and councillor Butt will all be away on official business this afternoon. We will still have a quorum. Don't worry, we'll be fine. So I seek a seconder for the apologies. I'm looking at you, councillor Barrett. You are seconding. Thank you. And we'll put that to the vote on the voices. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Thank you. And we will adjourn Arts, Culture and Heritage to the close of planning and strategy. Thank you. Over to you, Councillor Rutherford. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Tēnā koutou katoa. Haere mai ke tēnei hui. Ke te mana whenua rangitāne. He mihi nui. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Good morning and welcome to Planning and Strategy. Um, first up, I will call for apologies and we've got an apology from Councillor Finlay for lateness. Were there any other apologies? Great, um, I will move that the apologies be received, seconded by Councillor Hancock, and I will put that to vote on the voices. All in favour? Aye. Any against? That's carried. Uh, moving on, uh, I have not had any notification of additional items. Great. Um, are there any declarations of interest? Perfect. We'll move into public comment. Um, we do have a public comment from Kerry Hockard, so I'll invite you up, Kerry, um, down the end. <coughs> Morena Kerry, so you've got three minutes and you can start when you're ready. Thank you. Kia ora koutou. Thank you for the time to comment on the proposed review of the smoke-free policy coming up today. So I'm Kerry Hokard from the Local Cancer Society and I really support the commitment being made to community health and wellbeing in this policy. I've really appreciated the opportunity to contribute to the Council's smoke-free reference group that's mentioned in the review. So I'd like to add my support for option one of the proposed review. So my reasons for this being 
Smoking remains a significant threat to New Zealanders' public health, especially in our Māori and Pacific communities. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in New Zealand. Every year, 5,000 people die prematurely in New Zealand from smoking-related illness. So why would you select option one? At a national level, in considering and hopefully adopting a smoke-free and vape-free environment policy, Palmerston North would join the path that other councils have made across New Zealand to support smoke-free and vape-free communities. Locally, as stated in the review, there was strong support for treating vaping and smoking in the same way and making smoke-free environments vape-free. The benefits of smoke-free and vape-free outdoor environments, playgrounds and reserves, sports grounds, community events, transport hubs and outdoor dining places for us all include healthier workplaces, reduced litter and making it easier for people to quit smoking and vaping. Including vape-free in the policy means that making smoke-free areas also vape-free reduces the risk of vaping becoming normalised, particularly among non-smokers and young people. It minimises the role modelling of vaping to children and lessens the risk that they see vaping as cool recreational behaviour. It reduces public confusion and makes smoke-free, vape-free easier to enforce. The long-term health impacts of vaping are still unclear. We know that while potentially vaping may deliver fewer harmful chemicals in cigarettes, it may affect lungs in the same way. The council's got a leadership role in the well-being of the community, aspiring to Palmerston North being a safe and healthy city and creating the communities and the environments to support this vision. Our community needs your aspirational leadership to continue. Our smoke-free policies, outdoor environments and outdoor dining have helped to reduce our smoking rates. We need to put the health and well-being of our community, and in particular, our most vulnerable, our children and our future generations at the heart of our decision making. So I ask that you too will support option one of the review. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry. Councillors, are there any questions? No questions. Thank you for coming in today. I'll move that the public comment be received, seconded by Councillor Hancock. And I will um, call for a vote. So all in favour? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's carried. Um, moving on to item five, hearing of submissions. We have got one submitter this morning, Vivian Sandbrook, which is submission number four. Morning, Vivian. So we've got um, 10 minutes for your submission this morning and we're using a traffic light system which is just to your right here. Um, so you'll have seven minutes on green, two on orange and one on red. Thank you very much. Well, good morning everybody and to the elected members and members of the public. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to my submission. There are many points which I could raise, but today I'll just mention a few broad areas. I'm not in favour of removing Clause 11.7 from the Cemeteries and Crematorium Bylaw 2018. My view is that a cemetery should be a tranquil, peaceful place where someone can go to remember a loved one. Since the cemetery is shared 
by those of many faiths and ethnicities. It needs to be a neutral place, not dominated by any one group, so that no offence can be caused, or as little as possible. If Clause 11.7 is removed, it would seem to give a carte blanche for anyone to place a large structure on their loved one's grave. Now, if one extrapolates further, one can imagine perhaps a large cross, a statue of Buddha, Islamic, Hindu, or other religious symbols, or perhaps even a baseball bat, tennis racket, soccer, goal post, TV set, chainsaw, sewing machine, and so the list goes on. And all of these potentially could be in close proximity to each other. <clears throat> now, while these things may individually look pleasant and be well crafted, when combined, they could create a disorganised conglomeration, a, a sort of jarring mishmash of odd, weird and strange shaped structures which may emanate in confusion rather than order. This would not be conducive to quiet and tranquil remembrance. Another potential effect of Clause 11.7 being removed is that the loved ones could construct a fence. How high would this be? Potentially, it could be very high, as no guidelines seem to be mentioned. A fence would also detract from the cemetery's peaceful setting, as it would interrupt the clean expanse of lawn with lines of demarcation and these lines could comprise a variety of heights and styles and materials. And this also could easily get out of hand and cause offence. Another possible effect of removing Clause 11.7 would be an enhanced though maybe an intended element of competition. One family might strive to be like the proverbial Joneses and want to have the best decorated plot in the cemetery. Now, while this could be a noble intention, it could also act as a put down or subtle bully-like behaviour towards those whose grave sites are not so well decorated. Now, when I was looking to choose a plot for my beloved late husband, I looked for a place which had no loud or in-your-face structures nearby. As I mentioned at the start, my view is that a cemetery should be a quiet, tranquil and neutral place where one can go to spend a time of quiet reflection to remember a loved one. Please keep it that way and leave Clause 11.7 in the Cemeteries and Crematorium Bylaw 2018. Thank you, Vivian. Um, I did just have a question around, um, you've spoken quite clearly around your, your view of um, large decorations on a grave site or plot. Have you got a view around a, like a small garden or any planting or do you, is your preference that it, that it remains a lawn cemetery? Have you got a view on that? Well, my view is that there should be guidelines. I do enjoy flowers and I think they are appropriate to have in a cemetery and small perhaps low gardens 
do look very nice. But of course, these need to be well looked after. If they let go to wreck and ruin, as it were, there is um, potential that they could become overgrown and become ugly and untidy. So <coughs> there would need to be some sort of guideline as to the height of the flowers or bushes allowed. In my view, not, not very high at all, just low ground growing type plants. Does that answer your question? Yes, that does, thank you. Uh, councillors, are there any questions? Councillor Utakiri. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vivian. Very helpful um, to speak to your submission. You you talked about wanting the cemetery to be a, a tranquil and, and peaceful and neutral location. Currently, the cemetery does have um, some plots which are decorated to various degrees. In your assessment, would, would you think that currently the cemetery in its current form is tranquil and peaceful, or are there some issues that currently concern you? Well, by and large, yes, it is um, tranquil at the moment. But my fear is that if these types of decorations are allowed to be proliferated, it could end up becoming something like a concrete jungle or metal jungle where, where the tranquility just seeps away. Okay, so, so if the intention of the proposal was to permit more of what is there currently, would that be more palatable or comfortable for you? No, not really, no, because, I mean, as I was trying to point out, it, all different people have got different ideas and there's all different things which could be put on the graves, and I mentioned a number of, and of course there's plenty of other things as well, and you could have all these things side by side, and they just, while individually they do look very nice, but all together they don't look so wonderful. And so you either have to say, yes, everyone can do it, or perhaps no one can do it, and have some sort of guidelines. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Councillor Johnson. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, thanks, Vivian, for your submission. Um, at the moment, there are, as uh, Councillor Utikeri uh, suggested, um, there are graves at the cemetery that do have construction materials used. So if we don't remove this clause, we would have to ask those families to remove the materials that they've put on the graves to commemorate their loved ones. Mm -hmm. So um, do you think that that would be reasonable? Yes, I think so, yes. Okay, thank you. Councillors, are there any other questions? Councillor Denison. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just in regards to, uh, and follow up to Councillor Johnson's question, around allowing a time frame for the removal, whether that be a year or, or a months, a number of months, uh, would you be open to at least having some sort of length of time Applied before we had a had a um, complete removal. If that was your your view, yes, I think that is more reasonable to have a guideline like that. With just a short time. Can I just get a gauge, or will you see short time? Would that be months or a year or two? Can I understand? Yeah, up to a that? year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vivian. There doesn't appear to be any other questions, so we appreciate you coming in um, and giving your time to speak to your submission today. Right, councillors, we've got a um, recommendation on the screen that we hear the submissions from presenters who indicate their wish to be heard in support of submission and that the committee note the procedure for hearing the submissions as described in the procedure sheet. So I will move those two recommendations, seconded by Councillor Hancock. And I'll open for comment. Yes, Deputy thank Mayor. you, Madam Chair. This is just a matter of process through you, perhaps, sure. to someone. 
Um, I noticed in the submissions that there was at least one other person who indicated that they wanted to speak um, to the submission, but we've only had one today. So is, has that person been contacted or? Sure, so we originally had three who wished to speak um, pre-COVID. Uh, I believe one of those people does not reside in New Zealand and so um, changed their position on um, speaking and all, all submitters who indicated uh, intention to come in and speak in person were contacted, um, I believe a couple of times. Yeah. Great, well um, I'll call for all in favour? Aye. Aye. Any against? That has carried. Um, I'll now adjourn planning and strategy until the conclusion of the Committee of Council meeting. And we'll just take a couple of minutes to swap over.